Today's topic on Ag Shorts is how we register our Tennessee walking horses for Weba. First off, what's Tweeba? Tweeba is more or less the Tennessee Walking Horse Association. There's the AQHA, which is the American Quarter Horse Association, and it's more or less the same thing just for Tennessee Walking Horses. What's a Tennessee Walking Horse, you might ask? It's a specific breed that's able to gait. A normal gait for non-gated horses is the walk, the trot, the lope or canter, and then the run. So you really only have four gates. Gated horses happen to have extra gates beyond the four that were already described. They'll have things like a pace, a fox trot, so it's an a extra gated trot. It's not a simple diagonal of two, 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 two. You actually get one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, and that's kind of how the beat goes. But regardless, our gated horses require registration just like anything else. So we typically use DNA poll. What they originally had us do was we would, when I was a little kid, we would fill vials using their veins in their neck and we would ship those vials to the association in order to prove lineage, make sure that they're actually registered. Then you get a registration paperwork. Now, it's a whole lot easier. We just have to pull hair and make sure that hair has the follicles. That hair sample comes from the horse's mane. We put it into an envelope. We register those horses, we take those hair follicles, we ship them off to a lab, the lab analyzes the DNA, voila, we get our confirmation, and then we're able to also get coloring schemes confirmed or denied and be able to get the registration paperwork afterwards. So later this week, we'll be sharing some of that process, but every single year we have to do this, whether it's one full or it's six. The easiest way we've found is we take a little bit of wood, a good hefty piece of wood, something about the size of your thumb if you can, and we'll roll it onto a good 50 to 75 strands of hair, which is a good little, typically the way their hair usually clumps together, you, you can take one of those clumps that's coming off their mane, roll it up real well and pull it really quick. Then we're able to take that sample and send it off into the mail with the registration paperwork. This is a much more efficient way. It's a fantastic way and it's a easier way to register our animals every year. Of course, we don't have to register, we choose to because it does add a little bit to any future owners that decide to buy our livestock. They can always say, hey, mine's a Tennessee Walker and it's not just a Tennessee Walker, it is a registered Tennessee Walker and they can look at their, they can look at their certificate and identify exactly who is in their uh, lineage what type of champions, world champions, whatnot, that they desire to be in there. And there's a whole scheme there um, that some people really enjoy, especially I, my girlfriend is in the um, American Quarter Horse Association mindset. She really likes some of those horses and that lineage there, and that's completely fine. Um, the thing is, it's just some people look at bloodlines, um, and she's one of those people that she really – enjoys looking at bloodlines much like somebody would look at genealogy with your family understanding where that horse comes from uh what kind of traits should be in that horse because of their lineage and it's a similar concept so a lot of people will pay attention to that paperwork for us it's not that important we just want a good mindset color um disposition goes with the mindset but it's really for us we're looking at a holistic horse my father when he has gone in the past to look for horses. He's often found that he has to go find reputable breeders that we've had in the past um, or people and contacts that we've had in other parts of the state. He will look at those lineages, make sure that they don't, um, what we call bottleneck genetics for some of our herd. So our stallion Bentley was one of those. He was born uh, the same year as another horse that we sold. He kept those two horses, which was a video that we made. He assessed those two stud colts for a full year, made the determination based off of this position and the confirmation of their body, which would stay, which would go, and Bentley won out. So he was uh, remained intact as a sire for us that helped with our genetics and our registration process. And then uh, Batman was his half brother. 
and he was castrated and gelded and then eventually sold after training. So that's kind of the things that we do as Tennessee walking breeders and trainers is we're looking at that lineage, that registration, the process, uh, trying to make sure that we take care of our breeding program so that we don't continue to inbreed. You don't ever want inbreeding. It causes a, a multitude of issues that we feel is one, unethical, and two, just not worth it. So for us, we always look to reputable breeders and contacts outside of the ranch when we're looking to expand our genetic line so that we can continue with the breeding program or the breeding mares that we already have. So thanks for watching.